We made the craziest decision to move our 40 foot shipping container about two acres further back on our property. The goal was to build a lean to off the side of the container from the logs we have already milled and logs that we cut down from this spot. Well, the logs that aren't powdered. About a week ago, this area was hardly walkable, let alone getting this huge block back here. So nothing cutting down a few trees and spending the day cleaning up can't fix. Now we are taking the time to grind the stumps and get the ground cleared in preparation for moving day. But it's not a project unless there's a problem. We kind of have to pick the least bad of the decisions here. Another day, another dollar. We have so much brush to clear before we can grind the stumps that we need gone. And Dylan just said that he wants a gravel brought in to go under the container, which I agree with, but that's just another another thing to add to the tally list, the checklist. So that is what we're gonna be doing in this video, more than likely. To be honest, I'm filming this right after we finished the last video. We're just gonna keep on rolling. So I don't know where this video could take us, but you're here for the ride as much as we are. Time to whip out the lane shark. Even got the shirt on, just feeling like a lane shark kind of day. We've done a whole video on this implement. This is an awesome local company that is nearby us and uh, proud to support them on this here channel. So let's fire this thing up and let her rip through some of these saplings we got back here and get some stuff cleared out. You know what time it is? Got my boxes from Bespoke Post in the mail. <laughs> Gotta get her back in the neutral. There we go. All right, guys, I got three boxes here from Bespoke Post, so let's take a seat and see what's inside. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. You can join for free and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. All right, box number one here. This is the flip kit. Now we're talking. That is a good looking knife. Damascus steel blade there. Nice, compact folding knife. Got the more traditional thumb latch on there. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. All right, this is called the swing kit. Check this guy out. Yeah, a tinder scraper. So this is for when you're starting a fire, you can scrape some of the bark and stuff off of a limb and get some small shavings of wood to start your fire with. This looks like a quality piece of kit here. Every single month, Bespoke Post introduces its members to cool new products from outdoor gear to home and kitchen to barware, as well as even things like live oysters and clothes, which is kind of crazy. And all of this is based around a simple preference quiz that you take on their website at sign up. Last but not least, this is the Explore Kit. I do like the, the cap on this bottle because that would be a great place for a carabiner. It looks nice and sturdy. So if you like attaching your water bottle to the back of a backpack or something like that, this, this cap is really meant for that. Even got us a nice little snack. All right, and lastly, we have the Nomad Packable Backpack. Look at that. Nice little day pack or summit pack if you're into doing long overnight backpacking trips. Every one of these box of awesome products has around $70 worth of value, but you only pay a fraction of that cost. 
Best of all, Bespoke Post allows you to preview your box before it ships, and that way you know if it's something that you want. If you decide that you want to keep it, go ahead and accept it. If you don't, you can easily swap it out for something else, or if you just want to skip it this month, you can do so at no charge to you. If you would like to get 20% off your first box of awesome from Bespoke Post, then you can use the link in the description below and use coupon code WOODBREW20 at checkout, or alternatively, you can go to bespokepost.com forward slash WOODBREW20. Thank you Bespoke Post for sponsoring this week's video. I'm really excited to be trying out some of these products and getting a new box each month full of awesome goodies. And you can too, again, using that link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get back into this week's video. Those are my two trees that I cut down. I don't remember, but those are the two trees I cut down and we finally ground the stumps. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Look at that. Timber! Yeehaw! took hours to grind and we have I can see three right now probably four more to do that are crucial to get ground um so that is what we're gonna be doing today it's actually like a few days later from the last clip but here we are while he does that I'm gonna start trying to clean up this tree with all the vines that are hanging down from it, it's really bad and it needs to be done. And I have nothing better else to do.
Well, we just ran a string line using the four-wheeler all the way down the property line, which we've never done before. So it's quite interesting to see where our actual property line is. Thankfully, the people who first developed these properties put in these nice pilings in all like eight corners of the different parcels over here. So everyone kind of knows where their property lines is, which is really convenient. So yeah, we're tied in there and we're tied in down on one down there. So like probably seven, 800 feet, something like that. <laughs> this Why are is... we doing this again? We're doing this so that we can see where the property line is so that we can make some educated decisions about where the heck to put the container exactly. Because like always, like always, we've somewhat changed our mind, or haven't changed our mind, but we've, we're, we're considering all of our options currently. I'll show you what you, I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> so what we've been preaching this entire series is that we're putting the container this way to avoid the grade that goes this way, and yada, yada, yada. Well, we started doing some measuring, and we found out that virtually every place we can put it this lovely oak tree that we are not willing to ever part with is sort of in the way. Doesn't matter where we put it back here, the oak tree makes some part of using this inconvenient. So we're weighing all of our options currently. And so I'll show you one of the other options that we're thinking about right now. So this is our property line coming this way. This is where we've been talking about building that service road into, and then we would turn into the shipping container this way. But now we're sort of thinking, what if we just put it long ways over here? The grade isn't nearly as bad over here. It's built up pretty well. And we only have really one of these stumps to contend with currently over here. So there's a lot more area to put posts in the ground and those sorts of things. But what we're sort of thinking is we could leave enough room on this side of the container along with the property line to put a lean to if we chose to later, which we probably will. And then somewhere like right in here somewhere, the shipping container would start and it would come to about where Molly's standing or a little bit further behind her, come over to say somewhere right in here. And then the lean to that the salt mill and everything would be under would come over another 10 feet this way. And the only things we're really contending with that could potentially be a problem are these two little trees that were right here but that big stumps out of the way which is good and then there's if you turn around this oak tree again this will likely make it kind of hard to pull stuff into the lean-to this way we'll probably have to come around and go in through the front but i don't think that's going to be much of an issue because this side of the lean-to is where we're talking about keeping the sawmill long term and we don't really move that around much so i don't see that being an issue However, what we do move around a lot is things like the trailers, the tractor, the lawnmower, all that kind of stuff. And it could go in the lean-to on the other side and it would have a clear shot down the service road that we're talking about making. And so it would make that really easy. So we're sort of weighing, weighing those options. The problem that we're running into going the original way is that once we measured everything out, we're really close to stumps being in the way of doing what we want to do but more so this tree is really in the way. Like we can't go that far that way as we thought we could because of the drainage ditch over there. And so we're stuck over this way and this thing becomes a real, a real problem. We kind of have to pick the least of the bad, the least bad of the decisions here. Yeah. More or less. The better of the two. The, the least bad. Yeah. They're all kind of bad in their own way. <laughs> so we made up our mind. We're going long ways. I guess. So now the only stump is that one. Maybe well, that one. Those all have to be taken out too because all of that needed to go so that we can use the salt mill in this way anyway. So That's we true. didn't take down any trees that didn't need to be taken down. And we still need to grind the stumps. But I've ground all the ones that are like priorities at this moment. So... Now this is the only one that we have to do to get this project moving along. So maybe one, maybe that one too.
gotten a lot done, even though a lot of nitpicky stuff, but a lot is done. We now have all of our logs moved out of the way for the new container location here. They're a little precariously stacked, but that's because I wanted to use as few logs on the ground as possible, and we'll deal with that later. But what this means now is we have a clear shot to the container, more or less, to get it back here. So really, one of the next logical steps is to try to get it back here, which is going to be the most daunting part of this entire project. So we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. That's either going to be in the next video or one of the videos after that. I'm not really sure. we got to get our ducks in a row to, to make all of that happen. But we've got this entire area cleaned up. So just to give you sort of, a again, an overview, the plan is the shipping container is going to be right through here. And then on this side, we're going to have the lean-to for the sawmill. Logs will be right there, ready for us once we get it back here. And then we'll pull the sawmill back here. Then we can mill all the lumber for the lean-to, build a lean-to over it. And then ultimately, I'd like to build a lean-to on the opposite side, which is going to be directly in line with our little road that we're making. And that'll be a good place to store the tractor, as well as the four-wheeler and lawnmower and all those types of, of goodies. And then obviously we'll have the entire interior of the container that we can have an ungodly amount of interior storage for all sorts of things that we have, including hopefully some dried lumber. A lot of you have been asking about a lot of the lumber questions and saw milling and stuff. We have plans to build a kiln, but not yet. Needed, we really need to get a proper place set up for the sawmill first. It's been a priority of ours for quite a while, and we're finally doing it. But that's all we got for this week's video. We hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.